We're here at the Dolby stand at CES 2016 and I'm joined by Roland Flyku to talk about Dolby Vision. So Roland, this has been a big weekend for you, but I'll talk about Dolby Vision. Perhaps you can start by just explaining exactly what Dolby Vision is. Yes, good to see you, Steve. Um, yes, yeah, so Dolby Vision is our implementation of a very high quality, high dynamic range and wide color gamut uh, system for delivery of entertainment content into the home, onto televisions, and in the future also into you know handheld tablets, etc. And it's really designed to transform the viewing experience. It's an add-on to uh, features that people are already familiar with, like uh, Ultra HD 4K. And it really is um, a viewing experience that people can um, perceive from across the room without really uh, needing a lot of um, explanation around what um, Dolby Vision or High Dynamic Range really is. You just mentioned High Dynamic Range. Perhaps you could just explain what does that mean by High Dynamic Range for people who don't quite understand. Right. So in today's uh, entertainment world, such as broadcast and Blu-ray, the, uh, the range in terms of the, the brightest brights and the darkest darks is uh, fairly limited and is, you know, adheres to a specification that is more than 20 years old. So content creators and directors have been asked to compromise the way they tell their story and how they relay their content to uh, viewers uh, in the home, limited by technical um, you know, parameters that, as I said, are, are quite outdated. With high dynamic range, which is a, um, an in industry term that we brought onto the map about two years ago here at CES and has since gained very wide um, industry adoption and uh, a lot of momentum, is effectively the ability to extend the range of video material by showing brighter brights and, and darker darks and also widening the, the color gamut and therefore enhancing the experience by showing a broader palette of colors that uh, viewers can see on their screen. Um, there's various versions of high dynamic range. Why do you think Dolby Vision is the superior version? Right, so there, there, is, uh, in, there are indeed um, um, a selection of uh, different approaches. Uh, with Dolby Vision, we have uh, done you know, a significant amount of, of research over the last seven or eight years here at Dolby around really bringing a system to market that is future-proof, that is uh, solid and uh, delivers a uh, increased and improved performance across a wide range of televisions. So with Dolby Vision, you can make uh, the, the television look better, uh, even at an entry-level price point, all the way, of course, up to the high end. Uh, we master the content in Hollywood, you know, with the blessing and the support from the Hollywood studios, where they're giving us their content, uh, the original source files. We recolor grading them, remastering them in Dolby Vision to the maximum uh, fidelity, and then this fidelity is sent all the way to the consumers' televisions. And if you have Dolby Vision in your TV, then the TV understands how to map that content exactly to the capability of the respective hardware. Could you just explain the uh, mastering process? Yes. So. Um, typically, you know, we start from uncompressed sources, so this, these could either be film or digital. Film actually has an amazing amount of dynamic range that has really not been uh, Im implemented or, or leveraged in, in up, um, up until today. So what we're doing is we're rescanning the negatives in the case of film or we're going to the raw files that came straight out of the camera in the case of a digital production. And then we are putting the colorist or the director in front of a high performing, uh, high dynamic range display so they can see all of the fidelity in the signal and a lot of times these directors tell us wow when I shot that film I I couldn't even imagine that I would ever see this level of fidelity ever again the last time I saw this was when I was on set with my own eyes and now thanks to Dolby Vision I can reproduce it and I can tell my story in a much more powerful and a different way and that's uh, you know very much welcome as you can imagine by creatives when you're watching uh, Dolby Vision content on a TV that doesn't support Dolby Vision how does that work so Dolby Vision is designed in a way that on the delivery side, we actually have a backward compatible version of Dolby Vision. So the, the backward compatible part is exactly the same signal that uh, you're seeing today. So we have the ability to, you know, for a broadcaster or a content provider to send one signal that is a, you know, um, a component um, that has the, the legacy compatibility function and then the enhancement component that is only recognized by those devices that um, support Dolby Vision and there you get the full experience. So if somebody wanted to experience Dolby Vision, um, where would they find the content and also where, where could they find the display? So we are in market today with Dolby Vision. Uh, we started shipping the Vizio Reference Series TV here in the US uh, late last year. And uh, content is coming from sources like Voodoo, which is an uh, over-the-top streaming provider that is um, you know, for um, premium first-run movies uh, that are you know, for rental or, or sell-through. 
and uh, those are the movies that we're regrading in Hollywood. We're putting them on the Voodoo platform in Ultra HD 4K resolution in Dolby Vision and in Dolby Atmos for that matter. So when you buy one of those Vizio TVs, you can get that full experience if you connect that TV to your home Atmos, home Dolby Atmos system. Uh, we also here announced at the show that uh, in the future LG will be bringing Dolby Vision to their lineup of all OLED televisions and uh, Super UHD LCD TVs for 2016. Those will be sold worldwide, so they will be in market in the first half of 2016 all around the world. Again, with content from the Hollywood studios, with content from Netflix. Netflix has committed to supporting and distributing Dolby Vision content. Uh, Marco Polo season one and two will be, be the first two pieces of content that will be made available on the platform into the LG TVs. We also announced a television from TCL um, that was announced previously for the China market is now also uh, announced for the US market will be in the market here in the second half of 2016. So there will be a wide variety of product and uh, selection of different manufacturers to experience Dolby Vision. People probably think about HDR when they hear the word Dolby Vision, but there's more to it than just that. Can you just talk a little bit about, um, about the color space that you use and the bit depth? Sure. Yeah, so Dolby Vision, um, you know, to, to your earlier question, the reason we believe it's uh, the highest quality HDR system is because we master to 12-bit precision. Nobody else is doing that. And that is important to avoid, you know, artifacts such as contouring, etc. And uh, we also have uh, a definition of uh, color space that matches the ITU color space for Ultra HD, which is the recommendation 2020. So that is a color space that is wider than the one used today, Rec. 709, also wider than the one from Digital Cinema, which is uh, DCI-P3. Uh, so that's definitely um, a, you know, our dedication to be compatible with other industry standards and also to make content future-proof. So we're mastering uh, content in this container that also go, can go all the way up to 10,000 nits or 10,000 candela per uh, square meter. And uh, inside that container we are mastering Dolby Vision content to the maximum fidelity that we can today, uh, which of course exceeds that of televisions. And so you will have a future-proof asset that you can enjoy many years in the future. Um, one, one of the um, interesting things about HDR, and you mentioned it before, is that film has a larger latitude than perhaps they realized when they were first making the, the movie. Um, is there a, an, uh, obviously, it's important that creator's intent is retained. So is that being um, looked at by both you and the studios? Yeah, so every single title that we master in Dolby Vision uh, requires artistic approval. So even if our colorists work on this, in the end, the studio will send somebody, either the director himself or the colorist who worked on the original title or, or a delegate to approve the new grade. So this is absolutely an artistic uh, process and we highly respect that and, it, and we have to because the, the ability for Dolby Vision to really exercise the capability of high dynamic range and white color can completely change the look of the movie. And this has to be you know, an artistic intention. It can't be something that is automated or just, uh, you know, done in a, in a generic or a random way. Is all content able to be remastered in Dolby Vision or is it limited to the way that the film was originally shot? Um, so in most, in the vast majority of cases, if the um, archival material is still available that has a latitude such as the camera negative or even some inter positives, uh, we rescan those at, you know, 16-bit high dynamic range and there is a lot more range in there than has ever been you know visualized up until today with the you know existing media in the case of digital uh, you have to really be able to access the raw file you know as you know many cameras have different modes of, of shooting content and they you can go straight to a um, mezzanine or a um, you know interim master where you already lose a lot of dynamic range right away but if you if you shoot raw and you store the RAW and you have access to the RAW, that's a perfect starting point for a Dolby Vision grade. Now, there's lots of um, 4K TVs already in the marketplace, many of which don't support HDR at all. Can someone who has a TV that doesn't support HDR still benefit from Dolby Vision in other ways? So I think in general what you can say is that, you know, as with anything, if content is mastered at a higher level of fidelity than what you're actually displaying it at, that you can see some benefit. It's similar to, you know, shooting in HD and then displaying the content in standard definition, you still see a benefit there. And uh, so this is a, you know, similar side effect that is a, a small benefit to those who don't have a Dolby Vision TV. 
the situation would never arise where they would watch a Dolby Vision piece of Dolby Vision content and the picture would be washed out because it wasn't able to handle HDR, for example. No, that would not never happen because uh, of the way we have, you know, defined the different uh, distribution profiles in, Dol in Dolby Vision. If you have the requirement for backward compatibility in the case that you described, you would always use the, the dual layer base and enhancement layer configuration. If you have, for example, a future product that is uh, IP based where you can guarantee that it's Dolby Vision compatible, you can also choose to distribute in a single layer format. Uh, that is more bandwidth efficient, but it requires um, recognition, of course, that the receiver is absolutely capable. There have been uh, three UHD Blu-ray players announced at CES this year. Um, am I right in thinking that currently none of them actually support Dolby Vision? Yeah, so Dolby Vision is an optional part in the Ultra HD Blu-ray standard. And um, the, the decision to support Dolby Vision, of course, is up to the respective manufacturer of Blu-ray disc players. Uh, we're also working with the studios on authoring solutions to create uh, the ability to master um, Ultra HD Blu-ray discs with uh, Dolby Vision uh, in terms of the enhancement layer. But again, there is uh, built-in compatibility in the sense that uh, you don't have to worry about not being able to, to play back content or to see a picture. Roland, thank you very much. It's good to see you, Steve. Thank you very much for stopping by and have a good show.